Yeah. Until you come online. He didn't argue. We're good. Sorry. Um, I think you're right. I don't think the audio blasted out until this picked it up. Yeah. Still, though, we'll get it. We'll go on. At least our plan worked out. Yeah. All right. We are ready to go. Yeah. Hit record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Karen, you can still hear us, right? Yes. Yep, all good. I guess not. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. okay, fair enough. Go ahead. All right. Uh, welcome everybody to the May 23rd MBTA Section 3A subcommittee meeting in Bellingham. I'd like to open the public meeting. So with that, I think uh, Rob, you have um, some updates for us on where we are in the process. Sure. So um, as of last week, I reached out to our consultant. So I guess going back to the initial meeting, we were discussing a couple items. There was the status of the bylaw being written for a uh, town meeting. Also for, um, sorry, that's IT. Oh, okay, fine, sorry. Um, so there was the writing of the bylaw for town meeting. There was also the public outreach portion, because there's actually the second part of our uh, application that needs to go to get funding for public outreach and the bylaw uh, writing with our consultant. Based on conversations we had with our consultant, who's not on tonight, um, they did not get the bylaw written for tonight, but they should have that done in a couple of weeks. So we'll have that draft. Um, as far as the application for the second round of funding, um, there's still some money left over in the first round, so if they're able to continue with the bylaw, but they reached out to Mass Housing to figure out the, the basically when that second round or the application for the second round can go in. So we're dealing with that as well. Um, and then I reached out to get a little bit more information on some of the public outreach information, because I know we have uh, I believe the meeting is set for June 11, so I haven't received anything from the consultant, but planning on reaching out again just to see if we can get more information on that since June 11 is coming up pretty quickly. Um, so that's where we are at. Um, I know I also presented, I made just a really brief slideshow for the select board just to kind of Kind of start the public outreach process as I know we wanted to. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, do we want to hit, mention the fact since our last meeting, your title has changed? I think the last meeting I I had to step down as one of the board members, but sure. You're now the town, town planner. Correct. Correct. Is that the correct title? Yes. Yes. That Congratulations. Is. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. Yeah, he's he's the director of planning and engineer. Yeah. Okay, that's a good point. I have full credit. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dennis. Um, anyway, so that's where we're at with these updates. Um, oh, yeah. So I, I did present to the select board just a very brief PowerPoint presentation, which I can pull up just to show you if you're interested, but might be a good starting point for when we get some presentation material set forth for that June 11th meeting. So um, with that, you know, if there's anything else that anybody wanted to add. No, I mean, it, I think we're moving forward. The consultant is moving forward. Um, I know um, I had sent Amy some articles, which I think um, the board has hopefully read in regards to what other towns are doing, kind of where the state stands. I don't know if it's too difficult, Rob, for you to pull up that um, link to the map that I sent Amy, because it's does like a town by town 
where each town stands who's actually submitted did so far? I'm pretty sure I did. If not, we can just describe it. <laughs> yeah, it, that would be good because I'm not too sure if I saw that. You, maybe you weren't CC'd on the email. I might not have been. Okay. I apologize. Essentially, um, what the so the Mass Housing Partnership is tracking where each municipality stands in regards to their, you know, their adoption, their application, et cetera. So I think there's still a hundred towns. Bellingham included, who hasn't submitted anything yet because our, you know, our, our bylaw isn't done yet, our submission isn't done yet, and we're doing this in fall town meeting, but I think there's about 50 municipalities where they've um, said yes to whatever was proposed by the town, and um, doesn't mean that the state or the attorney general has approved those plans yet, but they um plan to adopt them uh, is, is my understanding. And there's about 10 or so municipalities so far that have either voted it no or um, in non-compliance. So I would say the majority of municipalities so far have been able to um, get their plans passed through. And I think uh, the understanding is that there is more than one municipality that's taken the same approach that, that we have and sort of, um, overlaying these these um, zones in areas that are already have dense housing um, and very similar to, to what we've been working on with our consultants. So I think that's really kind of the, the gist of where things stand and what I've seen publicly about what's happening around the around the region. Anything you want to add, Bill? No, I think there are more items coming up explaining the approach we're taking and other towns are taking. Seems to be rather practical. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. So uh, before we move on to the discussion about June 11, should we open it up to the public for any kind of comments or questions about where we are in the process? Yeah, I think that'd be a really good idea. Okay, uh, uh, in the audience, and does anyone have any questions for us? So where are we in the process? So the consultant is still working on drafting up um, our proposal, and that's really where we are in the process. Obviously, um, it'll the goal is to be presented at, at town meeting in the fall. I, I think we are going to try to get um, a preliminary look in front of the attorney general if we can. I, I think our consultant has sort of said, it's not likely that they'll have time to really look at it because every town is sort of, all the towns that haven't done anything yet are, are kind of in the same boat and maybe trying to do the same thing. So um, if we can get sort of that cursory, yes, this is passing this, this scratch and sniff test, then, you know, it, it means we are hopeful we'll be in compliance or we should be in compliance when, if it passes and we submit it. Correct. So which is true. As are we are you going to be presenting to any the library at the senior center? Are you going to be doing any of that? Yes. Even when we last talked, that was matching. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so that's the next item on our agenda is a, no, no problem. Um <laughs> no, you're jumping the gun, which is good. But um yes, so community yeah. outreach is really the next piece of the puzzle. Um, so we'll be working on that concurrently as the consultant wraps up, you know, the, the zoning language and, and the technical side of things. Yes. Is it, what's the deadline that we have to have all this in by? Is there one? So it's December 31st. Um, I don't know if that means... I'm not... I, I'll leave it to Rob. I'm no, not I know it's December 31st. And I believe it it has to be adopted by town meeting by that point. So one way or the other at a town meeting. Correct. I, but it doesn't mean the attorney general is going to get back to us by the 31st. It'll probably be much longer for them to review review everything. So um if it doesn't pass at fall town meeting, then you might be getting together New Year's Eve. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess you can call a special town meeting, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. 
So if it doesn't pass at regular town meeting, we would, I guess, have to attempt to to give it one last shot. Right. Right. So do you have an intention if it if it doesn't pass? There's been no it... talk of that. Yeah. Oh. We're confident it's gonna pass. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I think I think we have a good plan and I think it a couple of boxes and and you know just to clarify. The consultant we're working has been provided to us by the state so that she know is aware of the whole process. And we feel she feels comfortable. I don't think I'm putting words in her mouth. Nope, she mentioned during our approach right now. And that an article that was in Sunday's Boston Globe, and they made an article today, other towns are taking our approach. So our approach is not unique, but it's been developed recently over the past year based on what other towns have done. So by waiting and doing it in November, it's had its benefit. And, and it is my understanding too that comments in the media from the attorney general have said, if it's in compliance, it's in compliance. So, you know, it doesn't mean that they'll change their mind if they see a lot of towns kind of trying to limit the impact of, of the zoning overlay and changes. I mean, we we have to cross that bridge if it if and when it comes. So I think we push forward in, in our direction. Um, we won't know if it's accepted and, until it gets accepted. So that's- We voted on it. That as well, yes. Uh, yes. I have two questions. Uh, the neighboring towns that you say they're all discussing this amongst themselves. Is there a consortium of towns that are talking about the different attitudes that might be blended to make this process easier? That's number one. And if I can remember number two, oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll answer number one. I'll let you mull on that. So, and and oh, if that consortium could be put together, do you think it'd be a good idea to have that consortium? Um, get together with local news agencies like ABC, NBC, CBS, and notify everybody um, that way because most people are unaware of what's going on. Yeah, so I I do believe I read somewhere that there is a group. It's not MHP, but it's another housing organization that's put together working groups of similar towns. Bellingham is not participating in that to my knowledge, but we can look into it. Um, I don't know, Rob, if you know of, of that. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that, but I know that, so we're part of MAPC, which is a regional planning authority. And in our group, I know we've had sessions just regarding MBTA, it's such a hot topic right now. Um, the, the thing is with, the different towns is that everybody has a different town charter. So there's different ways that you can adopt this. For us, we have to go to town meeting. I know like Franklin, they're looking at, it's actually a part of their downtown. And I believe they only have to have a meeting with their town council. It doesn't have to go to an actual town meeting to adopt the change. So every town's different. So it's kind of hard to say, I mean, basically in that, that regional planning authority, we are all asking each other, what are you doing? But it doesn't necessarily correlate with each it's other's so much what you're doing is why are you yeah. doing it that way? Yeah, I think yeah. That that's that is yeah, the, the big socioeconomic uh, differences between towns make a big difference. Exactly. The space makes a big difference. Yep. And I think um, you know, I in our case with our approach, I think we're we are fortunate in a way that we have these two developments that are relatively close to the highway as well, that I think that it's a very, very fair argument to say that we're in compliance with the intent of these regulations. So um, other towns, you know, they don't really have that luxury. So I think we're actually kind of lucky in this instance. And I give you know the subcommittee credit and our consultant for really looking into finding a way to make this work because as we all know um you know when the when the regulations are 
first or fifth fourth. I know a lot of people were very concerned. I think we're all still concerned, but um, I think that this is a good approach. I know some of you have come to our very first meeting. And our approach since then has changed. We've learned a lot in four or five months. And we feel comfortable with the consultant and the approach we're taking. In regards to other towns, every other town is, is somewhat unique. They're looking at it in ways that are similar to us, but a little different. So that's why it's hard to put a consortium together. I know some towns will like to do that. But at this point, we've not been approached about a consortium. And I think we feel pretty comfortable in our approach. And that will become clearer in, in a minute when we talk about um, the designated parcels and um, what we want to do on June 11th. Yeah. And I will say there, I do think there's a contingent of municipalities that are banding together and thinking about other legal actions, um, which I think that's beyond the subcommittee's purview. So that would, I think, need to be a discussion with town leadership as opposed to with us. We're just, you know, looking to present an option for compliance. That's really our purview. But there are towns that are not happy with what's going on and they don't want to comply. They don't feel they should have to comply. Um, and I think that's that's their right as a municipality. Yes. Has anybody checked with the town that have rejected this process to find it? Is there a connection between them? Is there something going on that maybe we haven't learned yet? Is there some reason why these towns are refusing other than stupidity or whatever other reason they can? Um, but if they know something we don't know, I think we should find out. No, I think the line of thinking is more that zoning is meant to be done at the local level as opposed to the state level, which that is a completely different discussion. So they just upset that the state says you've got to do that. that. And I, I, I don't know all of the details, but I think in Milton there was the placement of the proposed parcels for their, um, you know, um, for, for their potential zoning overlay, that it was something that the town's people wasn't interested in. And I believe in Milton, it did pass a town meeting and then the residents did another special town meeting to vote it down. So th there's a lot of complexities around that. I mean, I think the common theme that you'll see with the towns that have rejected it at town meeting is their relative lack of reliance on grants for lack of a better description you know they don't feel that the financial impact is worth complying then they're not going to they they'll vote not to comply okay. yes and basically what i was saying about the social economic uh, per capita or income or yeah or yeah and we've talked a lot in our first couple of meetings about how bellingham is very you know uses the works grants and all of those things pretty pretty regularly so for us the financial burden of not complying is something every voter needs to consider pretty heavily so you're fairly certain that you've got a good plan Do yeah i mean plan? We have and to rely on our consultant and come back to bite us later. If it does, it'll come back to bite several other municipalities as well. I mean, we can't guarantee <laughs> that this is a, a silver bullet, but if our consultant says we will be in compliance as things are written now, then we have to trust that that's what happened. If the AG comes and makes changes or alters the regulation, then again, we, yeah. we cross that bridge when, when we get there. But luckily the state is providing the funding so that the cost burden for us to figure all this out is not on the town, it's on the state. So we have these free grants. I think it's up to, what is it, $50,000? So we have funds and resources from the state to, to help figure out all of the complexities. But education moving forward, as you'll see in a moment, is going to be critical. Yes. Educating the public now and in the early fall is going to be immense. I can't 
stressed out enough. No, there's a lot of misconceptions floating around. But um, so, Rob, with that, do we want to move on to the next topic, June 11th, our scheduled public outreach? Sure. No, that makes complete sense. So I think we have two sessions, if I'm not mistaken, one o'clock and seven o'clock. Yep. So at the senior center. At the senior center. So we will be booked there. Um, June 11th. Yep. And, and we confirm that with the senior center. Yes. Good. Yep. That's right. Yep. That's right. You told me. That. Yep. And I, I plan to do that. So, yeah. June 11th. June 11th. Yep. June 11th. Which is a. One p.m. and seven p.m. So we're kept. Oh, I didn't realize we were doing two. Yeah. So the seven p.m. is for those that work yeah. during the day. Mm -hmm. But you guys, Senior Center has a newsletter. Well, we can get into this. Yeah. Like there, so we'll be trying to post this in newsletters, the Bellingham Bulletin. You know, they'll we'll try to get ahead of that. We don't have a ton of time, but we should. If you could bring something else, we have a, a, a dinner next you, Thursday. You have a dinner, okay? And we can just put it out for people to see. If, oh, if we have a handout or something. Yeah. It's great. Okay, we can probably put something together. People like that anyway, maybe over Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you already send something for our newsletter? I don't think so. Do we miss the deadline? Yes. When? When do these dates confirmed? Um, not that long ago. Yeah, it hasn't really pretty a newsletter. Yeah. Yeah. The newsletter just was published two days ago. Yeah. Okay. We'll make sure we'll be doing it again in September, I think, somewhere else. Yeah, we're we going to have another outreach session in September as well. Mm -hmm. So that one we'll make sure to get in into everything. But this one we wanted to do before people take off for the summer and kind of wind down and stop thinking about, you know, these kinds of things. So we wanted to kind of get our initial outreach done at least once in June and then right then again in the fall before the town meeting. Um and we're going to look at all the options for outreach. One and seven. Yes. One and seven. So one and seven. Yep. And I'll be at both. Okay. Yeah. I will. I'm, I'm out of town. I'll try to come back for one of them. I can be at and the I early was, one. I was thinking, I know we're kind of in the weeds, but I was thinking, Rob, um, um, seeing if someone could um, video, take a video of the event. Yeah, I can. I'll have to talk to IT. I don't know if there's capabilities. Or I can ask. Yeah. I can ask somebody. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I would think we could. We, we could do Maybe it not first. even live stream. We could just... do it Zoom and. Oh yeah. Live stream it and record it. That yeah. Way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll figure all that out. Jeff was trying to talk, but my speaker speaker on here. Oh. I don't know which one. Jeff, if you type into the chat, we can see it. Jeff, can you try talking now? Sure. Hey there. No, that's not the right speaker. Give me one second. No problem. I'll try one more. How about now? Good evening. Oh, okay. Oh, we got it. Nice. All right. We I can you. certainly, I can help out on the June 11th, 1 p.m. session. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Um, so is our consultant confirmed to be at both as well, Rob? Yeah. Um, I believe so. Okay. Oh, I can Let's, verify yeah, that. Yeah, verify that. Um, because they're the ones that are going to be answering all the tough questions, probably. Yeah. <laughs> the technical questions. And and with that, I wish that we had a little bit more input tonight with some of the public outreach material. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, they didn't get it. So I also sent Amy a link to the Town of Weston's website for their MBTA subcommittee, and I thought it was very well put together. They had an FAQ, which I think, I mean, we could probably just take their FAQ and make it our own. Um, but I think that would be helpful to have as um, an electronic version as well as a printout. Yeah. Um, and obviously we'll have to put together a slideshow, maybe yours that you presented. Yeah. For the select board could be the basis for that. Yeah, I'll show you. You are probably not going to like it because it's <laughs> not very creative. The engineer does a PowerPoint. Yes. Board at this point. 
looking to approve this um, at the level of what the state wants. Um, have it compromised by uh, negotiation or totally reject it? Uh, is there a name? Um, what are you aiming for? I mean, I think as a subcommittee, we've all agreed we would like to see Bellingham be in compliance, given all of the things that we talked about, funding, all of those things. I think we're we're all feeling more comfortable with that, given that we are able to, from our understanding, put the zoning overlay over the multi-housing that we already have, which would allow for some expansion of development, which is in line with the you know the intent of the regulation. Um, I'm I can't speak for everyone necessarily in town leadership, but I think we as a subcommittee are hoping that we end up in compliance and that this plan works and it will minimize impact on infrastructure and all of the you know the negative externalities that people are concerned about. Um, yeah. Are you getting any resistance from within the town? Um, sure, there are people that don't want any more development and they, they will always have that stance, right? So, you know, and that's their right and they can vote that way at, at town meeting. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. I will say that as far as submitting, anytime anybody is asked about where we stand with the MBTA overlay, not overlay, yeah, overlay. When people ask about it and we actually present what we've come up with, usually, I don't think I've received any negative feedback yet just because people understand that we're not putting this on raw land. It's not this massive surge of new development. Um, I mean, that being said, it hasn't been, I don't think there's been a whole lot of public outreach besides these meetings. And we really appreciate you coming out to, to hear how we're trying to approach this. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure we'll, we will most likely get negative feedback, like anything, you can't please everybody, but hopefully this is a good enough approach that, you know, people will receive it well. And that's why we're doing the outreach. Yeah. No, it's absolutely. Crazy. Yeah. Because if you recall, when we first walked in, ugly. We, we had <laughs> some apprehension I was falling. Yeah. <laughs> and then we realized, hold on. This may be a way to do it. Yeah. And that has everything we discussed so far. Everyone agrees this is a viable option. We have we did not have, as far as I know, there have been no roadblocks put in front of us by consultants so far. So that's the process we're knowing this. And I'll know to educate the public. And doing it several times. Key biggest argument I've heard about it is you're going to bring all these people in town. We're going to have to expand fire department, police department, school. That was the that, that's the things, yeah. things that are going to have to be overcome. Well, uh, oddly enough, and I, I plan to bring this slide to the outreach, multifamily rentals actually have the lowest percentage of school aged children per national multi housing council data that I pulled. It's single family owner ownership household and single family rentals that have the most school age children per the census data that they analyze. So I don't think there is necessarily an argument there um, or it's or there's less of an argument that you'll end up with all these apartments with kids in them. The other thing is um, we can't we can't dictate the the unit size right or the number of bedrooms. Yep. I would presume most developers would want to do studios or one bedrooms. It's rare that I see developers doing a whole building of three bedroom units. It's just, I think financially less, um, they won't, they want to pack them in. So They'll probably do a mix, but <laughs> the bigger units that would be minimal compared to the studio. Yeah, they're normally a very small portion of the overall development. Um, 
So I think, you know, there is something to uh, when the police chief was on, he said, responding to calls at um, these housing, you know, multi housing units take longer and, you know, they add to call times and all of that. So there are some negatives, but I think the, the discussion about, you know, impacting the, the population or the school population is probably not as concerning as some people think. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, Karen, would you mind letting me uh, share my screen? Or not? Well, well, Karen's allowing you that. Um, are there other things you want to talk about on, on June 11th? So there'll be the consultant there, we'll be there. Dennis, I assume you'll be there. Yeah. Um, Amy will most likely be there as well, I, I would think. Um, so outside of, um, you know, presentation, obviously we wanna have, we wanna have printouts. Um, we need to um, market the event, so to speak, and social media is probably the easiest way, um, despite, all of its faults, um, you know, so I don't know who should post them. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Um, to um, the town, but does the town have a good one? I don't think the town is, do you have a Facebook page? Sure. Well, we have various Facebook pages. We can put them on all of them. And yeah. Of the okay. council does, the fire department does, the police department does, so we can certainly get it out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. CBW does, yeah. And then we can possibly post it on the boards at both the north and south part of town. Yeah. And possibly cable television. Yes. Yep. So we're going to try to get you know, use as much as we can yeah. to get people to show up. Sure. Also, word them out will be very um, What about what's that radio station that? Yeah. Um, My FM or whatever. Oh, I, I don't. Does it make sense to reach out to them to have someone talk about this on the radio? I don't know who listens to that. I don't, but I can't hear it. Right, right. Because we want to encourage participation. Is anyone listening to WBZ at night? Then there was a segment about an hour long on WBZ with um, I forget who was who the host was, and it'll be brought up again, and I will try to find out. But it is getting more and more um, feedback publicly. And people's questions are starting to be answered based on what other towns are doing. And we can post, um, Dennis, we can post this on the uh, calendar on the website. And do people get emails about those? Or is that just for the planning board? Um, what, what we can do is we will, um, when you <laughs> post something to town news and you signed up for town news, okay, it'll go to you your get email. an email. So you, you, you get, as things are posted on the website, you get. I don't sign up, but I know. Sign up. <laughs> I know people get, do get. You know, the latest breaking news. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right, so those are all the avenues we're going to use um, to kind of get through this for June 11th. Um, I don't know. So Rob, maybe we have to talk to the consultant about a printing budget. You would think, and I know that there's materials online. I can kind of, I'll dig up that website um, that are more generic, not related to Bellingham necessarily, but maybe those would be helpful to kind of intersperse. Um, no, absolutely. Excuse me, the, the gentleman last night was Dan Ray on WBZ, who is a, uh, um, Weekly show, uh, daily show at night, and he had at least an hour, and he will discuss with you in a future show. Just as further information, we have a coffee and conversation on every Tuesday at the senior center. So if you had flyers or something to hand out, okay, it's good time to do it. Twenty up twenty five people here, so yeah. is that every Tuesday? Okay, what time is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
What is the um the the dinner you have next Thursday? What's the time for that? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, these are. Oh, sorry. We you also have places like uh, we. Fred and I are from Trotter Village. We have a mail house that, I, you know, we've got sixty six units there. Um, if we could have something to put there, mm -hmm. I don't know if the Charles has anything. Um, they have many. Curtis. Yeah. Yeah, Curtis. Um, I don't know about any other places. I, I don't know the entrances to these places. I don't know if they have a place for you have the opportunity to advertise, but yeah. In the Hartford Village, we have a mail room. Okay. We'd be glad to have stuff up there. Okay. Thank you. Those are good suggestions. Okay. Um, this is my Awesome slideshow. That was. I like the colors. Oh wow! Thank you. <laughs> the the most important stuff. This is just you know the quick overviews of what was required. I mean, the slideshow behind you as well. It's easier. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> those are the the district requirements with the fifty acres. Half of it has to be contiguous. Anything else that isn't. Part of that has to be a minimum of five acres in size. The yield needs to be 750 units. And then that calculates to 15 units per acre. Those are the requirements. The What we're proposing are the two sites, the Charles and the Curtis apartments. Those are the areas, the capacities based on that model and the gross density. The, I think the most important thing that people want to see are these slides where it actually shows the overlay itself. So in this case, you know, the, the purple outline is what we're proposing for the overlay. Could we um, get blown up maps for like on easels for G11? Uh, David yeah. can do those from. Yeah, because they have the full. Yeah, they have the, the plotter. Right. So we can yep. do a full. Actually, Tim can too, but we can run. Yeah, yeah, cool. I've utilized because people plotter. they're gonna want to like look at it zoomed in and then maybe zoomed out as well. Okay. And I think too, this is actually from the consultant slides. I actually took this from that presentation. Okay. It might be helpful. Maybe not with this one, but especially with the Curtis to show the actual image. The building like footprint. Yeah, because yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, this one is pretty straightforward. This is the property line for the Charles property here. Um, but this one, that's the Curtis apartments. You might not be able to visualize what's already been developed because right in here is where the Curtis apartments sit now and then going do east it you know you get to the more undeveloped portions yeah so it might be good just to show both of those mm -hmm. um and then just my conclusion slide of what was required and what we're proposing for the okay. i think this is a good start i i do <laughs> think if we add in an faq and sort of answer a lot of those questions like this is not a production requirement it's just a zoning overlay so on and, and so definitions forth. of what an overlay is. yeah and even on the town of weston their website they listed all the grants that it's like 10 or 12 grant programs that you risk losing access to so i think kind of when it, i didn't even realize how many there were so that was pretty helpful you lose just grant money or state aid also they're threatening state aids What's that? They're, they're threatening state aid. That's a threat that they've offered, but right now they've been speaking in terms of grants. Thank you. Just to let you know, yeah. Yeah. two weeks after Milton voted it down, <laughs> they lost a grant for a seawall in Milton. They, they did not waste any time. It took me a, about a half hour to figure. I didn't think Milton was in the ocean. But in the Ponce River, 
is part of the city. And there, there was a wall there. They had a project to repair that wall. It subsequently been denied based on the vote of the town. So that's how quick the state reacted to their voting now. I mean, it was within weeks. Um, anything else that we want for June 11th? I mean, I know we still need to speak with the consultant, but is there? Yeah, I think there's still a, a fair amount of work that you know myself, Amy, are going to have to to do to get the consultant's information and then get. What I would like to do is put a slideshow together. And then perhaps we can come back and discuss it before the June 11th meeting as a subcommittee. And then yeah, basically any changes that need to be done, I can do. And then um, we'll get ready for that, that outreach part. And then getting input from the consultant is going to be key as well. Um, but so I guess propose that, possible idea of having a meeting on June 6th. I would probably have. I have to zoom in. I'm um, presenting at a conference. You won't okay. be out of town. And we have zoning that night, so it'll have to be before the zoning meeting. Okay. What time is the zoning meeting? Seven. Okay. We can do it at 5 30. Yes. Yeah. I should be able to zoom in. What I, what I could do. Um, I can make a push next week. I'm going to have to make a push next week to get this information um, sorted. If you want, um, next week, the 30th might be a little bit too soon. But if you wanted to meet the beginning of the following, so June 6th is the Thursday. Um, I don't know. Oh yeah, we could meet the six if you wanted. Is that is the voting is the fourth. Election day. Election, election day, day is the fourth. Is the and fourth. I can't do that day anyway. And I'm gone the fifth and the sixth. So whatever you want. I could do Monday or we could do the sixth. I don't know if select board meet the third GMA. They have to meet the third. Okay. Because this room will be booked. For seven, yeah, I would prefer the sixth. Okay, yeah, I'll just do. I'll zoom in. Okay, so, um, so before, so we're gonna meet on the sixth to finalize some things and discuss some things. In the meantime, do you want me to take a stab at a flyer? Yeah, definitely. Um, and like some social media posts. Yeah, I, that I think we have to get out like as soon as we can at this point. I agree. Um, and yeah, I'll just, I can reach out to, to Sarah, to Barrett planning to, I mean, I'll do it tomorrow morning as soon as I come in to yeah. see if she can send anything. It's like, she owes us that info. <laughs> right, right. So, um, and then um, if we wanted to do a mailer, should maybe we, I guess maybe the fall would probably be better. For a mailer, yeah. If there's a budget for a mailer, yeah, it's just it's just timing. I gotta think it's in their budget. Again, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. Of this, so yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Rob, what I'd like to do, sure, is with your PowerPoint, maybe pick it up, and I may try to get to the senior center, either this Tuesday or the following Tuesday. So I wouldn't. Bring the PowerPoint because okay. I think that's gonna. If there's no one there to explain it, it's people will just panic. I think what we want to do is get the flyers ready. So if you go to the senior center, you'll have that's flyers because so. it's important okay. to get people to the meeting so we can answer questions and really not control the narrative, but make you know. I think if you just give people the PowerPoint, yep. they'll just panic. Okay. And not what I will try to do is come to the next two copies of the flyers there and let them know when we're meeting. And that'll be it. Well, we have one Tuesday, so. I'll try to be there if I can get. Better try to get done. <laughs> yeah. If it's not, you know, I'll do the following Tuesday. That'll be a week before the meeting. That's right. Yeah. 
I have a propensity for trying to see problems and avoid them rather than fill them up and squash something that might be viable. And one thing I noticed, if you were going to put those uh, maps up, people would notice that there's not many roads into the back areas of Curtis uh, Oak Woods or um, a child's. I would leave those if I have a proposal for how you're going to enter and exit because uh, North Main Street right now is a train from 3.30 to 5.30. You add another 150 to 200 houses in there, you're going to panic. Mm. You know, and there goes your vote. Yeah, that is, yeah, that is something to think about in terms of messaging. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'd like to know what the proposal is. <laughs> well, they don't have to actually right build it, build yeah. anything. <laughs> you don't have to build these. But you you have to presume that they will. So right. And, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Ultimately, yeah. if it came down to building out any of these locations, it would be up to the developer to present a traffic report and traffic study to the planning board so, to where my attitude comes from is those in the construction business for almost 50 years. And when I went out to a job on, on my own, I would look at the job, figure what has to be done, what I needed, and take two more sets of materials and ideas with me in case I, I ran into a roadblock. Yeah. That's what I mean. I have a yeah. propensity for looking ahead rather than trying to fight off what's coming at me. Sure. So like measure twice, cut once. You just said that the uh, it would be up to the developer to do the traffic study. That's not going to help you at this stage, no, because they're going to think development. They don't care who's going to do the traffic study. So the less we talk about traffic study during this, the better off you're going to be. That's my point. Because they are going to, as soon as they hear development, traffic. Because you can't help but do that in the style. Agreed. And with this, talking of, I agree with you. Talking about traffic studies, talking about the developer is we're kind of putting the cart before the horse here. Yes. This is really just a zoning exercise in a way. And the closest it sounds like this is just hypothetical. This isn't for real. Someday it might be, but for right now it's not. So let's not worry about it. I liked what that yeah. And the you thing is, um, you know, the, the, the zoning would allow for 750 units. We're putting it over an area that's already got 560 units on it. So the worst case is about 100. Oh. And that's if they were able to take yeah, that out. Up. Oh. Yeah. You know, we, and all right, it's split up between the, the, the two properties. We know that likely the Curtis will put 80. They were going to anyway, right out in front. 80 units, I think, is what they, they want to do. So we're one step yeah, closer and, knowing that's there. So the most the child should do is another 100. Mm -hmm. you know, so. and, and we are taking the risk in thinking that the developer is not going to tear down what's existing to build denser housing yeah. in the very in the near term or even the long term. I, I think the Curtis is so new, it wouldn't make any financial sense for them to tear tear it down to build to the maximum. And um so I think it's a it's a good approach because if we were to choose open land, I mean that would almost guarantee that the units would get built. So um you know this seems to be the the a good compromise um you know to, to try to meet the the compliance in essence isn't the state looking at us to simply designate parcels of land correct accomplishes? correct so that's what we're doing yeah. we're simply following the rules of the state by designating the parcels of land in compliance with their regulation, or set in a stake here. In accordance to what you want, this is our approach. These are the parcels we are using to comply with your law. That's simply what we're doing. You have to designate parcels. <clears throat> 
people like to um, put their own attitude to it like I am right now. Correct. Okay. I'm not trying to hide anything. But as soon as you tell two different people in this town about a situation, you're going to get four different. Maybe, maybe eight, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there'll be people that will not agree with anything that we've decided to do. And that, you know, that's just um, democracy, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we, we some people initially came to our meetings, voiced their objections. And we, you know, we've not, they haven't said anything since then with this approach. I'm sorry. That's a very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Still... We'll, we'll, between now and June 11th, we'll work with the consultant to kind of refine the messaging. Yep. We'll ask them, you know, if they've done this so far in other towns, what has worked well in terms of messaging and maybe what has not gone over so well. Maybe that maybe Sarah and um, Judy will have insights on that as well. Um, I just want one more yes. Again, if we're fortunate enough to get a flyer available for this Tuesday or next Tuesday, if you need, just like your coffee group now, my role is simply to let them know there's a session coming up on June 11th twice. I'm not there to answer questions. Our goal is to in invite them to the session. Yeah. It's simple as that. So we'll just present you as um, board coming to invite. Correct. That, invite that's simply it. Yeah. We want people to come to the public outreach. That yeah. way they're getting all the information. There's handouts, presentation. They can ask questions. That way we can minimize kind of the, the telephone scenario where misinformation is getting spread. Mm -hmm. um, and I will do my best to get the okay. flyer done for you this weekend. I'm simply just a venue to invite people. That is not the opportunity for them to ask questions. It is on June 11th. I mean, you could probably tell them where we are in the process, yes. but you don't, you don't need to get into that. We don't want to get into specifics. Yeah, That's... just say we're working with a consultant who's done this in eight other towns, you'll hear all about it. They'll be there. Um, okay, so we have a plan for June 11th. Next steps, flyer, get the flyer done, get the information on the website, the calendar, you know, um, posting on social media. Um, and I think, I think we're in, in good shape. Rob and Amy are gonna work with Sarah and Judy, consultants to figure out the next piece and what they're responsible for. Um, Tim and GIS is gonna potentially work on some large maps if we, if we want to have that. Um, and then we will meet on the 6th. Correct. Okay. Yep. And um, what time were we thinking? I know ZBA 7, so you think 5.30? Yeah, All I think right. it would need to be 5.30. Okay. okay. That's fine. It'll be the same set of this tonight with planning board at 7, so. Okay. Do you recall the article I sent to you from the Globe that we both looked at? Did that answer a lot of questions? Didn't it have like a Q and A on there? That I don't know. I will go back and look. We may have that available at some. All the information that has been sent, except I think I may have missed that one email that you sent to Amy, but I know we've been saving everything on our, we have an MBTA folder that yeah. we have, so I can even dig some stuff up. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if those articles get outdated pretty quickly because things are changing. They could. Yeah, I, I think showing the map that Mass Housing Partnership is tracking, they update that every day. So that I think is, is okay. helpful because you can really see what's going on. Um, but, you know, if there's anything that comes across my desk that I think is super compelling, then we can probably include it. Okay. Um, yeah, because I feel like this, like in two weeks, it may be outdated. Yeah, okay. yeah it might be outdated by then. Um, and speak to that point, this is very fluid. I mean, things are changing, you know, frequently. Yeah. And that's why it's to our advantage to postpone and looked at November as opposed to the uh, meeting last night. Um, 
Okay, I think we have our marching orders for June 11th. Correct. Um, next on the agenda item is discussion of possible designation of parcels. That was more of just a carryover, unless there was anybody had. No, but I did want to bring up the point, um, I guess, to, you know, cover up all of our bases. I, I think we should ask the consultants, we should come up with a couple of alternative sites as backups. Hear me out. Yeah, no, I hear you. Go so, ahead. so. For whatever reason, if this doesn't pass and we need to come back at it from another angle, or if the attorney general comes back to us and says, no, we don't want you doing this. You have to like actually put something more viable together or more something that will promote more development. Mm -hmm. It would be good if we had something like in the chamber that has been vetted by the consultant to that meets the criteria that is maybe Yep. an alternative option. Would it make sense to me? We can, we have, we'll set the meeting for June 6th at 5.30, and then we have the public outreach on June 11th. Would it, do you think it would make sense to maybe set one meeting after June 11th? We can kind of regroup, figure out what the input is from the public from June 11th and look at that other idea. Yeah, and just sort of consult with Sarah. I, I think she was the one who suggested that other towns have had alternative or they've come up with two different plans. I don't want to do two different plans, but mm -hmm. just if we get to the fall and we need to pivot, I would hate to, you know, it's taking two to three weeks or even longer to kind of make sure the parcels are in compliance and then writing up the zoning. So I think if we have something available and we need to do another special town meet, I don't know, I'm just- She yeah. wants something on her back pocket, so to speak. Yeah, just as an alternative in, in case something changes between now and December and we have to pivot. Sure. So do you like the idea after June 11th? Yes, maybe? after June, okay. yeah, yeah. That's I'm good. happy to have a meeting over the summer. I mean, I think we should have at least one I'm, over the summer. I would one or two meetings. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so with that, I think the only other item is to approve the meeting minutes, but I don't think we have a quorum. So can we do that next time? Or we do have a quorum because Jeff is on via okay. Zoom. But if you want, we can push it to the fifth if you'd like. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. Or six, sorry, June six. Well, has everyone read them? Yes. Jeff, have you read the meeting minutes? Yes. Okay, then let's just approve them. Or so I well, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, meeting minutes from our April 25th meeting, the MBTA section 3A subject. I second the motion. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, you say aye. Bill O'Connell says aye. Liz Berthlet, aye. Jeff Skornavaka says aye. Okay, motion passes. Um, anything else from the public? Any other questions, comments? Um, yes. Curious about, do we have any idea how many grants we've got pending in this town? I know we attempted to look at that. It was a little complicated, I think, to sort of na nail it down. But I mean, we we have a, a two and a half million dollar, actually four million dollars for Hartford Avenue. That's you know in in the queue. It's been approved, and we also are pursuing and um, uh, another project, similar to the South Main Street project on the other side of Hartford Avenue from the cemetery all the way to the midway to the line. We've got the preliminary design approved by Mass Highway and likely it'll be uh, funded in FY29. So that'll be a similar project to what we did on South Main Street um, on Hartford Avenue. And that's that's probably gonna be up around $10 million. So, just those two projects. And then we have a lot of smaller ones. So people have an idea of sure. what they're going to the lose. magnitude. Yeah, you know, yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. That's why Dennis will be there to yeah. <laughs> let yeah. everyone know. So projects like that would never get done without mm -hmm. yeah, state funding. And, you know, never get done. Yeah. I'm sorry. Those are just the 90 roads. Um, that's like yeah. Street. Like, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. part of the house. Yeah. 
and the seniors had to rely on this for so many things. Yeah, and and I know that the the fire department said they have just gotten a grant recently. I'm not sure if those are on the chopping block as well, but oh, yeah, 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 school department. Yeah, I mean, the list, but we have to let people know. Yeah. That, it's going to cost. Yep. Right. In in addition to the fact that we could, uh, we'll open ourselves up to litigation as well, which yeah. is costly. Well, yeah. That's um, the, yeah, that's yeah. The, so the double loser. Yeah. 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 It would behoove us to make this work in a way that people are comfortable with, but it, it's there's a lot to lose for the town. That's for sure. If there is. Yeah. Um, so the June sixth meeting, that's just for you guys. Is there another meeting? No, I think that that'll be public if you wanna if you wanna join then too. We'll just be final planning for the eleventh, right? And talking with the consultant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be open like to the public. Okay, thank you. So I'm assuming we'll be using a screen. Correct. We have a... yep. yeah, we can present everything. Yeah, I just won't be here in person so someone else can lead, lead the meeting. Yeah, we can we can appoint chair for the evening. Sure. Actually, we found out you don't the chair can zoom in if you're right. Yeah. Oh, never yeah. mind. I can run the meeting. The chairs now can zoom in. Can run the meeting from Jersey City. Yeah. All right, there we go. Good. Uh, Paul, did you have a question? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm kind of new to the game here, and I'm just sort of trying to understand how all of this works. Now, if you put this overlay district over the Curtis apartments. Does that mean that the state will dictate how much they can charge rents on those places or? No, so it's all market rate, although um, we can require the 10% affordable, which is something that the committee talked about pretty extensively in that we would most likely like to add that in because we don't wanna come below um, the 10% affordable number and that would trigger more 40b and all of that since we're over the the 10 percent you know um we want to maintain that goal so if we add more market rate housing we run the risk of dropping that percentage so i think we would probably require 10 percent affordable um but no these are all these are all market rate apartments and, and essentially the regulations really do strip out a lot of the red tape, right? The point is to make it easier to so develop. It doesn't, it's not gonna cost these building owners money then in the long run, they probably welcome it because it get- Well, it costs them the cost to build. And, to, and if they have to borrow oh, money, it's already existing. Place. I mean, it's the tenants. It's oh, the tenants. Yeah. Oh, it's not going to hurt the tenants. That's what you meant, no. right? The tenants. Well, yeah. there now. Well, if the guy owns the building, he's got a mortgage. Sure. He's in there, and he's okay. going to charge a certain value to all of those tenants to yeah. to maintain a profit. It doesn't affect them at all. It's no no impact on them whatsoever. And I would imagine they already have low income factors in already at yeah. this point. Yeah. On 150 units, you're talking about 15 units that are going to throw the balance off. Mm. Yeah. That's not a whole lot in business. Yeah. <clears throat> right. And I think a lot of housing developers are very used to affordable components. Um, most towns require require that. So um, I don't think I don't think there's any surprise there. Yeah. Okay, so um, with that, we are a few minutes past. Um, entertain a motion to end the meeting. Do sure. we have to vote on that? Yeah, I, yeah. Okay. We need a second. A second the motion? Yes, thank you, Jeff. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. Bill O'Connell, aye. Liz Rithlett, aye. Jeff Scornavaca, aye. Okay, right. meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Thank you.